Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Portamento, or pitch glide, is kind of a requirement if you're going to make soaring leads and acidic bass lines. It's also a great way to add character to pad sounds. So it's no surprise that a long-standing feature request for the Digger Tone was that Portamento would be added. And uh, I guess about a year ago, uh, Electron um, uh, did what the people were asking for, and they added Portamento to the Digger Tone. Parameter lock Portamento as well. It's great. However, um, the Dig Attack, I guess because of its lineage of being kind of a drum machine, even though we know it can be so much more than that, uh, hasn't received that Portamento update, and I suspect won't. Um, so today, um, what I want to talk about is how you can get Portamento effects on the Dig Attack uh, without having a dedicated Portamento feature. We'll look at the mechanics of how it works, and then I'll sort of propose a, a kind of a workflow to uh, put together sequences with Portamento uh, more easily and more quickly. So in order to pull off this trick, we're going to head over to the LFO page, which is often where we end up uh, when we're trying to uh, do cool things on the Digitect. So um, obviously, if we're going to be um, getting a, a pitch movement, which is what a pitch glide is, obviously, what Portamento is, the destination for our um, LFO is going to be uh, tune. I'm, uh, I'm just working with like a single cycle waveform with a bit of filter modulation on it, but this will, of course, work with any uh, sample that you like. So here we are. We've applied um, uh, some tuning modulation, and we get tuning wobble, as one would expect. Now, to get a portamento type effect, we're going to have to change our waveform to what I think is probably the least often used waveform. It was for me, certainly. It took me a while to work out what this was really for. And that's the ramp. Now, um, the ramp you might think um, uh, initially is going to be a bit like a sawtooth. So it's going to go, mm, 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 mm. But it's actually slightly different. So if we apply a bit of depth, and maybe just slow it down so we can hear it. What's actually happening with the ramp waveform is that it ramps up, it immediately drops down, and then it spends the same amount of time as it did ramping up, sat back at the original pitch in this case. So it's not quite the same as um, saw, which is always moving. It's also going the other way, but obviously we can reverse it by changing the depth. So um, one thing that we uh, will often do on the dig attack when we're looking at our LFOs is that we will treat our LFOs as if they were envelopes. Uh, and we do that by switching the mode over to one. And what this will do is it will do one entire cycle of the um, uh, LFO waveform and then stop, essentially giving us an envelope that starts when you press um, the note. So in the case of ramp, when we do that, it's going to ramp up, drop down, and then essentially just hold back where it started. Um, very useful when we're doing uh, stuff like exponential. But if we think about the ramp shape here, what we were just saying is that it spends half the time going up, and it then spends the same amount of time back at the base. So if rather than using the one mode, we use the half mode, we will only get the ramp. And then it will hold for as long as we are holding our notes. And the depth is going to affect how far we slide. And the speed is going to affect how far we get there. And this essentially is going to allow us to fake our portamento. Okay, so let's work this idea into a sequence. Now, uh, for this, I'm going to set my um, multiplier to 32. Uh, you get slightly better resolution this way, I think. And if we have the uh, uh, BPM 32 multiplier and then set our speed to 32, uh, that slide is going to take the same length of time as a step. So that's kind of a good place to start. Obviously, we can change the speed um, accordingly, but that, I think, helps us get going. So I'm going to set my depth back to zero because we don't want this to be happening on every single step. 
necessarily. So let's have a listen to just this real simple little uh, loop here, which we're probably going to get sick of listening to, but um, bear with. Okay, so... Boom, 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 boom. And a little, little sparky one there. Um, so what I want to do in this sequence is that I want to have... Uh, this note which is up and this note which is down I want to slide up to this note and down to this note so let's think about how we can apply uh, our LFO uh, parameter locked to achieve this now the workflow that I usually do because I think it's easier to reason about it this way is that I will write my pattern in and play in the notes as you normally would so this is all in C of course it's in C so this is a D sharp and this is an uh, A flat, sorry, an A sharp, B flat. Um, if I wanted this note, this D sharp, to slide up from the C, if you like, so we've got C. If I want that to slide up instead, what I will start by doing is actually coming into the uh, source page and I will tune it down to its starting point. You can do this the other way around as well, but I think this makes it easier to reason about when you look at the notes that are actually in the sequence. So um, this is um, uh, D sharp. If I want to tune it down to uh, C, and now if we play, now this note is playing as if it is a C. Right? Now we're going to come into our LFO page and we're going to parameter lock the depth which is going to slide this back up to where it should be. Now, you would think that if you wanted to um, add three back on to uh, the minus three that we've just applied to the tuning, we would set our depth here to also be three. However, if we do this, what we're here, is it goes far too high, it's going up to F sharp instead. Now the reason for that is that our, um, or at least I think the reason for this, is that our um, ramp waveform here is unipolar rather than bipolar, and the um, the depth when it's, the depth when it's uh, bipolar is the entire um, sweep of the wave. Um, because this is unipolar, I think it gets multiplied. I don't entirely know the rationale for it. But the practical offshoot of this is that if we want to go up um, by three, if you like three semitones, we actually have to half that and go up by 1.5. So you have to do a little bit of maths. Um, but now if we play this, you can hear that we've got a little slide there. Now, if we want to make this slide more obvious, of course, we can slow it down. So that means we're going to want to reduce our speed. And we might also want to make this trigger a little bit longer so we can hear the whole sweep. If we want to make it even more obvious, we could, of course, tune this down a little bit further. So as we go down to six. And then we can have our depth at three instead. So we can play with how obvious we want to make this slide. So let's have a look at our other note here, this one, the lower note. So again, uh, what I'll do is I'll come into the source and this time uh, I will tune it up by two. Like that. And in our LFO, I want to have the depth at minus one to go back down. Again, we can slow it down if we want to make it a bit more obvious. Might need to make it longer if we're going to do that. 
Portamento slides, probably not quite a 303 sound, but on the dig attack without a dedicated Portamento mode. But here's another interesting thing to consider. So on that previous example, the um, slides that we were introducing were sort of locked to the fact that we were playing a note. Um, the slide was starting as the note played and it sort of swooped up into the note. But what if you want to uh, apply portamento or pitch bend to a note that is already playing? So uh, here's just a, a drone kind of sound that's playing, uh, playing across the entire of the bar here. So what if we wanted to take this drone sound and actually have it do like a um, pitch swoop part way through? So I've got the um, LFO page set up in the same way here with uh, my ramp and my half and it being sent to the sample. So say uh, maybe on step 12, I want to start making it swoop down instead. Now, if I put in a step here and apply my sweep, obviously it's going to, uh, let's go down by an octave, so that'd be minus six, because we have to half the amount. Obviously at the moment when it's hitting this uh, step here, it's starting my uh, sample again. It kind of, you kind of hear that it's killing the sample and starting again, which is not quite the vibe I want. I just want to make the currently playing sample slow down, like I'm slowing down the tape that's playing it back. Now, in order to do that, of course, we can use our good old friends, our um, lock tricks. So let's put down a lock trick here instead. So this isn't going to trigger our uh, sample to start again, but it does allow us to start parameter locking uh, the um, parameters on this sound. So, so let's apply our LFO here. So what's interesting when we do this is that we're not getting that glide, we're getting a step happening. And uh, the reason for this is that um, what's happening is that the depth of the uh, LFO is being applied, but actually the LFO is starting here, it's getting to its half end point. And at this point, we're just modifying where that end point is. So this is with this LFO page set up, functionally the same as just changing the tuning of the sample. So what we want is for this lock trick here to start our LFO again. So if we come into the trick page, if we look at the way that this uh, lock trick is um, set up by default, and this will be the same for all lock tricks, the LFO trigger will be turned off by default. If we turn this on, we get our slide instead which is pretty cool. We can stop our tape or slow our tape down partway through the bar without res restarting the sample. Now, one thing I've, I've discovered dealing with this is if we make much changes to the LFO page, so I've just changed the speed there, for some reason, I don't know whether this is a bug, but it turns off the LFO trigger which is a bit annoying. Um, but just be aware that if you're tweaking the speed, um, you may need to come back into your trigger page and turn the LFO trick back on. Now, of course, um, because this is a trick, albeit a lock trick, we could also apply um, conditions to this as well. And annoyingly, when you apply conditions, it also turns off the LFO trigger again. So just be careful of that. So now we can have this not always slide down. Nice. Uh, 
Okay, well, I hope that was uh, interesting and useful. Obviously, you can apply this basic idea uh, to create portal momentum in any situation, but you can apply this basic idea to um, get that kind of ramping effect for any of the parameters, of course. Um, so it doesn't have to be uh, for... Um, tuning for example um, you can do this to have a different vibe to a, an envelope with the frequency for the filter um, you could it might be really cool to have uh, the reverb send ramp in on a sound over over time as well things like that panning stuff from left to right this is probably the easiest way of doing it as well uh, if you did enjoy the video, uh, then uh, as always, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you're into um, Electron stuff uh, and Dig Attack and Dig Attack in particular, because uh, I can't quit them, <laughs> keep coming back to them. I have more and more videos, it doesn't matter uh, what uh, new and interesting sense I have in the studio. Um, I will always find time to come back and uh, talk about the Dig Attack and the Dig Attack because they're just that wonderful. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.